Nigeria was at a crossroad and something needed to be done urgently. Its president, Umaru Musa Yeradua, had been sick for several months and was in Saudi Arabia receiving treatment and there was nobody piloting the affairs of Nigeria as president on the soils of Nigeria. There was tension in the land and anything could have happened, including a military coup. To salvage this situation, the doctrine of necessity was applied by the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which at the time was headed by Senator David Mack. In this edition of Back in History, we take you back in time to the events that culminated in the application of the doctrine of necessity for the first time in Nigeria and the events that followed thereafter. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. President Umaru Musa Yeradua left Nigeria to Saudi Arabia and the official announcement from the presidency was that he went to the kingdom for Umrah. Few days into his stay in Saudi Arabia, Sahara reporters, an online news channel based in the United States of America but owned by a Nigerian citizen, Omoyele Shuwure, broke the news to the world that the president was in Saudi Arabia for medicals and not for Umrah. The international media picked on the story and escalated it. Pressure was then mounted on the handlers of the presidency back home in Nigeria to make full disclosure of the status of the president's health. But the needed information was not forthcoming. Even within the presidency, some critical members of the presidency were not aware of what exactly was going on. It was also curious to them that even the chief physician to the president, Dr. Banye, was left out of the president's trip to Saudi Arabia, thus feeling serious suspicion as to the true state of the president's health. Most so, as Sahara reporters had already exposed to the world that the president was not in Saudi Arabia for Umrah, but for medicals. Seven days elapsed, and the president was not back to Nigeria. On 27th August 2008, the Federal Executive Council was scheduled to hold, but the president was not available to preside. The Vice President Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan then presided, but had no answers to questions about the president's health. For about two weeks, the president did not return to the country. Power was not transmitted to the vice president officially before the president's departure. There was thus a serious anxiety in the country and a huge gap was created in governance. Critical decisions could not be taken as ministers and heads of government agencies could not secure the president's approval to proceed on several issues. The president's stay in the hospital was getting too long and the calls at home for him to urgently transmit power to the vice president was becoming really loud. The country was at this point without a constitutionally recognized leader on the soils of Nigeria. As of January of the year 2010, the president was still not back in the country. Was still, his attorney general Michael Andoka, senior advocate of Nigeria, in his legal opinion, had opined that the president could rule Nigeria from anywhere in the world, a statement which was greeted with outcry and total condemnation. There was rumor that the president had died and that his body was being hidden. To douse this rumor, the handlers of the president then invited the BBC Hausa Savies to visit Saudi Arabia and interview the president as evidence that the president was still alive. The interview was conducted and was broadcast on the BBC. In it, the president stated that he was not dead as reported, but that he was only sick but hopeful of recovery. From the president's voice, it was clear that all was not well and that something urgently needed to be done. It was at this point that the then Senate president held meetings with his colleagues and principal officers of the National Assembly and with the Chief Justice of Nigeria and the decision was taken to apply the doctrine of necessity to give authority for the vice president to act 
as the acting president of Nigeria pending the return of the president. It has been reported that the application of this doctrine was suggested to David Mark during one of his meetings with the then Chief Justice of Nigeria, Idris Kutigi, whom David Mark had invited to hear his suggestion on the legal and political logjam in the country caused by the long absence of the president for several months. This was the first time this doctrine was to be implemented in the entire stretch of the history of Nigeria. This was a sensitive issue and David Mark as Senate President needed to apply wisdom to be able to navigate the rough path. He needed to carry the Speaker of the Federal House of Representatives along. Meetings were held with caucus members of the Senate and of the House of Representatives. The decision to apply the doctrine of necessity was discussed and carefully analyzed. The modality on how the doctrine was to be introduced on the floor of the Senate and House of Reps was also discussed. In view of the anticipated reaction, every principal member of the National Assembly needed to be carried along. At the end of the meetings, there was consensus that something needed to be done in the country to restore governance back to the country. The invocation of the doctrine of necessity was unanimously agreed upon by the leadership of the two houses and the other members of the National Assembly caucus. The next hurdle to cross was how to implement the doctrine. Teslim Fularin the then Senate Majority Leader was scheduled to introduce the issue on the floor of the Senate. Fullerene represented Lagos State in the Senate. On the floor of the Senate, he moved a motion to transmit power to the Vice President Poshuant to Section 145 of the 1999 Constitution as well as Order 42 and Order 52 of the Senate Standing Rules. It was seconded by Deputy Senate President, Senator Ike Kweremadu. But before Ikweremadu could second the motion, Abubaka Gabo Lado, PDP Karsina South, the home state of the ailing President Yaradua, raised a constitutional point of order, citing Section 145 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He said that the Senate could not make the Vice President acting president based on Yaradwa's declaration on the broadcast interview with the BBC. He advocated for caution in the handling of the issue. Lado also stated that he would not join the Senate, quote, in doing something that is unconstitutional, end of quote. But the Senate President David Mark overruled him and insisted that the BBC interview should be taken as transmission of a message to us. In seconding the motion, Ekwere Madu said, quote, We have found ourselves in a very difficult time, and I am happy we are finding solution in the Constitution. Even in Section 145, the President did not have to sign a letter if he had sent a text, it would have sufficed. I listened to the BBC interview. Those statements are contained in the transcribed form posted on the internet and published in the newspapers. My constituents believe that Section 145 had been complied with. End of quote. This was indeed a solemn moment in the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Nigeria as a country had never witnessed such moments in the entire stretch of its political history. Senators at this point urged Senator David Mark to put the prayers to vote. Mark then responded as follows, quote, I will go to the prayers, but has anyone got a point to make? End of quote. The response was, quote, no, we need the prayers. End of quote. Minimal amendments were effected to the prayers and passed by the Senate. It then became the decision of the Senate to apply the doctrine of necessity 
and transmit power to good luck Ebele Jonathan to function as president of Nigeria pending the return of his boss from Saudi Arabia. Specifically, the Senate through the voice of David Mark resolved as follows, quote, that the Vice President, His Excellency Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, GCON, shall henceforth discharge the functions of the Office of President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federation as Acting President, and that the Vice President shall cease to discharge the functions of the Office of President when the President, pursuant to Section 145 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, Transmit to the President of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives in writing that he has returned from his medical vacation. End of quote. Senate President David Mark specifically noted in the motion before passing the resolution that Yaradua left Nigeria for medical attention in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on November 23, 2009, and that, quote, the entire country, particularly the Senate, prayed for his quick recovery and expect his early return from the said medical vacation. End of quote. He also noted that on January 12, 2010, the president, quote, transmitted to the whole world through the BBC a declaration that he is receiving medical treatment in Saudi Arabia and consequently will be unable to discharge the functions of his office until his doctor certify him fit to return to Nigeria to assume his duties. He went on to say, quote, that the Senate was satisfied that in the interest of our nation, section 145 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has been complied with by the said declaration on the BBC. End of quote. David Mark added, that the upper house was guided by the doctrine of necessity which according to him required that the house should do what was necessary when faced with a situation not contemplated by the constitution in his words quote the doctrine of necessity requires that we do what is necessary when faced with a situation that was not contemplated by the constitution and that is precisely what we have done today in doing so, we have as well maintained the sanctity of our constitution as the ultimate law of the land. Viewed from an ordinary reading of section 145, we came to the conclusion that the president through his declaration transmitted on the BBC has furnished this parliament with irrefutable proof that he is on medical vacation in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and has therefore complied with the provisions of section 145 of the 1999 constitution end of quote he added quote that for the peace order and good government of the federation and consistent with the judgments of the court the vice president good luck Ebele jonathan shall assume full presidential powers as acting president pending the return of president yaradua to office End of quote. The Federal House of Representatives, then headed by Dimeji Bankole, also passed a similar resolution for Good Luck Jonathan to assume office as President of Nigeria. Vice President Good Luck Ebele Jonathan moved swiftly to accept the resolutions passed by the National Assembly, empowering him as acting president pending the return of ailing president Umaru Musayaradwa. In his words, he said, quote, As we all know, our dear president, His Excellency Umaru Musayaradwa, has been receiving treatment in Saudi Arabia for some time now. Naturally, his absence from the country has generated considerable interest and a heated national debate. Today, the National Assembly passed a resolution mandating me to act as President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. In following the extant provisions of the 1999 Constitution to arrive at this decision, 
The leadership and members of the National Assembly have shown great courage, statesmanship, and patriotism. I salute them all. End of quote. This is the story of how good luck Abella Jonathan formally stepped into the shoes of his principal in the number one office in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Under the Nigerian constitution, it has already been provided that the vice president shall function as acting president in the absence of the president. This provision is in the constitution of several countries. But it is obvious that in the Nigerian situation, there were several intrigues and political maneuverings which made it impossible for Jonathan to step into the office of president without sweat. Jonathan went on to govern the country and when his boss eventually passed on, Jonathan became sworn in as the substantive president of Nigeria and appointed architect Namadi Sambo as his vice president. Jonathan paid glowing tribute to his boss on the occasion of his untimely demise. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notification on every new video. <music>